There's 3D printing, electronics, lasers, computer corners, and other stuff too. Here on this one, we're gonna need these three pieces, and then we're just gonna put the belts inside and kind of line everything up and seat it. And now you're gonna set the belt down on the bottom of this piece. So one of the belts, it doesn't matter which one, I think they're all about the same. And you're just gonna kind of lay it in there. And then you're gonna insert this piece uh, like, the, like, like so. And then just go ahead and push it from the top on the bearing so it goes all the way in. Push this in, but I got it in. So now you should have one belt underneath um, kind of underneath like that and then now you're going to slide in the second belt before you put on the next piece and that's just going to kind of it'll eventually fit in that, the teeth there and then you're going to just snap this piece on top of the bearing and push it all the way down but this is what it will look like so you can see you've got one belt that's down here you've got one belt up here on this um, on these that'll go on these teeth and then you've got a little bit of the bearing sticking out this piece also sits right on top of this um, like trapezoid you need a screw 15 millimeter screw a lock nut and a bearing and it's going to go right in here the bearing's going to sit right under the top of the screw and then you're going to put the lock nut on the bottom here's what it looks like when you get the um, lock nut on top the bearing and then the screw I found it easiest to use a pair of pliers to hold the lock nut on top of the bearing and then just screw it from the bottom. So that seems to work out pretty well. It's kind of challenging to get in though. Hub piece right in, just like the direction said, it was pretty easy. You have to make sure that you put the belt on and the teeth. Um, mine seems to be just fine. Tension seems pretty good, maybe a little loose. Hopefully that's not going to be a problem. Fine, which is this piece here. And then it asked me to kind of check by running this to make sure everything ran smooth and it looks like it does. Um, all right, now on the next step, um, basically I'm just gonna connect this base uh, to this bearing, just inserting it in. Uh, there is a little bit of a, or a few burrs in here, so I'm gonna take my file. I'm just gonna wipe it out and I'd show how that's done. I don't really have to do it much, but sometimes you get some blobbing in there especially if you're over extruding just a little bit. That's about all I usually do. And then uh, clear it out. So this goes in um, basically like this. And then it should just fit right on top of this piece that we just put together. Okay. And you just want to be really gentle as you insert it in. So yeah, that goes in pretty good. Um, Pressing it together. All right. I think as long as it's in there, you're good. Looks like there's plenty of bearing in there. So, um, yeah, I think we're in good shape. All right. For the next step, we're going to take the timing belt and pass it over the, the arm so that it lines into the teeth here, which is the top. And that's pretty much the next step. We're gonna have a couple different belts kind of hanging out, but now we should have all three belts. So we've got this one we did in the previous step, this one that's kind of hanging, and this one that we just added. The thing you're gonna do is just sink this threaded rod nut into the holes like that. Um, mine was a very tight fit. I actually ended up filing things down a little bit just so I could fit it in there. So I'm sure the tolerances on these aren't the greenest. At this point, you should also be able to put the threaded rod through there. So, no issues there. So that fits pretty well. I'm just gonna leave it sitting on the table like that. Okay, next up we're gonna take these um, rods and just insert them into these holes, pushing them all the way through. So they, there's really only one way to put them in. You just wanna make sure they're pushed all the way down and even. Yeah, mine are fitting in pretty well, so there we go. All right, those are all in now. Next up, we're going to put this triangle motor mount, um, and we're just going to slide it down. Make sure that 
the your motor connectors here before you do it and you can kind of line it eyeball it up it looks like the motor just sits right there nicely in place the directions also say to um, try to push all three at once to make it easier so I'm gonna try that and if these are a little tight you may want to take your file and loosen them up a little bit um, minor yeah they feel a little tight so I think I'm gonna file them I didn't have to file this piece, but I think I do want to file this. So you got to use a little bit of force. If you're using PLA, um, you might have a higher risk of breaking. So PETG's got a little flex in it, but I'm really um, putting some pressure on this to get it moving. But it is moving, so um, yeah, you just want to be careful and probably try to move all three at once. There, that seems to work. All right. So this should be able to go all the way down. Looks like it is. I guess if you can get it in there without breaking it, you're in good shape. Okay. Now we're down to the very bottom. Yep, looks like it's, yeah. So the, mo the motor is now all the way flush with the bottom. Just about looks like I can go a little lower, as you can see there. Okay. Hmm.